Good morning, this is Pastor Bobby. What a privilege it is to be with you on We're Burning Daylight. Thank you for joining us each morning here during the work week as we partake of God's Word and then together that we receive the revelation of a devotion that has been written and authored by Dick Brogdon. Thank you, Dick, for allowing us the privilege of reading this and sharing this on our social media platforms and growing together in the knowledge of the Word of God. Today's title is called Submission, and we're going to begin our reading in the book of Genesis, and I'm going to pick up in chapter 16, though there were a couple of additional chapters that were assigned to us today. This is where I'll be reading that in verse 1. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had born him no children. She had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. So after Abram had lived 10 years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abram, her husband, as a wife. And he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. And Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. Let me read that again. May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, Behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness and spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant, and you shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. He shall be a wild donkey of men, his hand against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. And he shall dwell over against all his kingdom. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, you are a God seeing. You are a God of seeing. For she said, truly here I have seen him who looks after me. Therefore the well was called Bir Laha Rahu, or Roha. It lies between Kadesh and Bere. And Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram called the name of his son, whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. Many of you recall that story, and I encourage you to continue to read the story as it continues of that of Hagar and Ishmael. I'm going to go over into the book of Psalm. I love the Psalm, and I love being able to share that with you and utilizing it not only as our praise and our prayer, but also that of hiding it in a heart of a word of encouragement throughout each day. Picking up here in chapter 6, where it begins with, O oh Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O oh Lord, for I am languishing. Heal me, O oh Lord, for my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled, but you, O oh Lord, how long? Turn, O oh Lord, deliver my life, save me for the sake of your steadfast love. For in death there is no remembrance of you, in Sheol, you will give, who will give you praise? I am weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. My eyes waste away because of grief. It grows weak because of all my foes. Depart from me, all you workers of evil, for the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea. The Lord accepts my prayer. 
All my enemies shall be ashamed and greatly troubled. They shall turn back and be put to shame in a moment, declares the word of God. I'm going to read just a few verses out of the gospel portion of this morning's reading, that of Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to be uh, just uh, isolate verses 19 through 24. Let us read this together. Do not lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, or treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, whether neither where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart is and will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either you will hate the one or love the other. He will be devoted to the one or despise the other. And many of you recall this portion of the verse, you cannot serve God and money. Amen. We pick up our last reading, if you would, out of the book of Acts, uh, that of chapter 6, verse 1, and we'll, we may just read the entirety of it together. Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, Is it not, is it not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables? Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to do this duty. And what they said, but we will be devoted and will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Procurus, and Nicarner, and Nimon, and Permanus, and Nicholas, and a proselyte of Antioch. Aren't you so thankful that our names are a little more common to us and a little easier for us to pronounce? These they set before the apostles and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase and a number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem and great many of priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen as it was called, and of the Cyrenians and of the Alexandrians and of those of Sicily and of Asia rose up and disputed with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. Then they secretly uh, instigated men who said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people and elders and the scribes and they came up upon him and seized him and brought him before the council. And they set up false witnesses who said, this man never ceases to speak words against the holy place and the law. And we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs and Moses delivered us to, to us. And gazing at him, all who sat in the council saw his face was like the face of an angel, the face of an angel. Amen. Let us read our devotion together. As I pre-announced, uh, uh, it is called Submission. Hagar bore Ishmael, which means God hears, who is considered the father of the Arab Muslims. The term Islam means submission, submission. And Hagar was told to submit to Sarah. Hagar responded by identifying the angel of the Lord as the God she had seen and the one who saw and heard her anguish. How sweet the double comfort that God has heard the anguish of the 1.6 billion children of Ishmael and that he calls them to the freedom of submission to his Christ. 
We tend to laugh at the impossible promises of God rather than the glory and what of is impossible or is possible, excuse me. May we too submit ourselves with joy to the promised destiny of millions of Muslims. More than 4,000 rise above the city of Cairo. With five prayer calls a day, this amounts to over 20,000 public daily mournful petitions rendering the sky. Will not the God who hears and sees look down in pity on these who sorely deceive, who are sorely deceived? Can we but lift our voice to God who hears our voice and will receive our prayers as we read in Psalm 6, 9? How unfortunate are these sons of Abram whose twisted truth is a double bind. Light that is in us as darkness is a great evil. Recall Matthew 6, 23. See, doctrine matters. Truth and clarity about the deity of Christ are crucial. Because twisted light is such a tactic of the fallen angel, we cannot subscribe to postmodern thinking when it elevates the journey or the process regardless of the starting point. We must have men and women who continually dedicate themselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Amen. Acts 6.4 We must have men men and women who unceasingly speak the truth about Jesus and the power of the Spirit, Acts 6, 13. We must have men and women who realize that to do this so will bring stones down on their heads and joy into their hearts. We must submit ourselves, we must submit ourselves to the divine Jesus and shamelessly insist that others do so as well. What a powerful passage of of scripture that we have partaken of today, as well as a devotion that I pray that stirs up everything that is within you to be that which God has called you to be and to do that which God has put in front of you to do and to do it with joy, even though we know that stones could come down on our head. Know that the joy of the Lord, hallelujah, is our strength. This is Pastor Bobby, and we have today giving praise unto the Lord Jesus and greatly praising him that you and I have been able to do this together. Looking forward to a couple of more days this week. If he doesn't return before then, on We're Burning Daylight.